Welcome to the Tanya Hoffman's Wow TV show. And as always, I have two today amazing guest stars. Oh my gosh, you are going to be just your mouths will be open the whole time because I have the incredible Miss Aspen Emery, who is the CEO and founder of Emerus, and my friend, and now y'all probably all remember Johnny Reed, Mr. JR himself. Hey guys, how are you doing? I'm excited to be here, doing great. Thanks for having us on today. Yeah, thanks, Sonia. So we're gonna talk about success because I think a lot of times people have this conception of really what success is. And it really, to me, there's like two components. One is relationship building, really caring about people, right? And then, you know, the other components we can kind of get into. What is your take on relationships? Emery, why don't you go, um, Aspen, why don't you go first? People call me Emery all the time. As a mom of four boys, they're running around, all their friends call them that, so I don't even know if they know they have first names. That's so funny that you said that. You know, success is one of those things where, for me, has always had just that personal component about relationships. You know, I feel like um, giving and serving others um, has made the biggest difference. And, you know, I've been in business, I've been in network marketing for 14 years. And a couple years ago, one of my teenage sons said to me, you know, as we were on a, uh, coming back from a road trip and he said, you know, first of all, I love it when your teenage son wants to have a conversation with you and they're not sitting there just with their earbuds in, you know, playing on their phone. So I was like, give me, give me everything you've got. But he said, Hey mom, are all of your closest friends, people that you met in network marketing? And I had to do a double take for a second because I don't usually analyze why or who or, you know, where they came from. But I started thinking about some of the people that I'm the closest with in my life. And I thought, wow, that was a pretty deep observation because the answer for me was yes. And at the time, you know, I wasn't building a network marketing business. I didn't own a network marketing company at the time or anything like that. I was at a transition in my life. But what that reminded me of is what I already knew to be true. I obviously knew that I cared about people and that connection was so important for me, but it reminded me that it's all about the relationship. These weren't friends because they were making me any money. These weren't friends because I needed to be friends with them or any of the things that we sometimes see in the business world in general. These were friends because I had made an effort 10 or even 15 years before to really get to know people to care about their heart, you know, what the business could do for them, but so much more than that, to care about their family. And that is where the genuine relationship, you know, sprung up from. And so I just thought that was a pretty incredible observation of a teenager to have noticed that piece. And so to me, it's the key. When you get the people right, the rest falls into place for sure. I know my 15 year old was in the car. You know how you have the Bluetooth on and I was talking to one of my friends and she hangs up and he's like, Mom, why is all your friends so weird? And I'm like, well, because baby, we're not in middle school or high school anymore. We could be ourselves, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're not trying to impress anybody. They're our friends because they know what we're about and they like us anyway, right? <laughs> exactly. How about you, JR? I think relationships is where the true happiness in people's lives comes from. And that's like, it's a double-edged sword, especially in the networking world. It is all, they say it's always about relationships. But I remember when I started uh, many long time ago, I, I, I feel old hanging out with you people <laughs> being 30 years in the industry. My relationships were good relationships with the wrong people. And so mm -hmm. breaking out was the hardest thing for me because I was, I was, you know, I had a bond with the people, but I started when I was in bartending trying to go back to school. And so everybody was, you know, wanting to go out and have fun, if you will, and had destructive behavioral patterns. And to break away from those people was very difficult. And I think that's the biggest fear in our industry is we're going to have to let go of certain relationships. But then that's where the magic comes from is we learn to have relationships with more successful people. We learn new things. And the one thing, and, and I'm, I'm sure I'm not telling your audience anything that I already know, who you hang out with is going to more affect your success and your happiness than anything else. So you always want to be around people that are going to support you and be positive. But we know that that's impossible because the world is made up of many different people. So I always encourage people always come back to the trainings, always come back to the core people of the company because they're going to re-energize your soul, if you will, so you can be more excited about what you're doing. So to me, relationships are everything. 
and, but it depends on what relationships you're in, right? Sometimes people are in the wrong relationships, destructive relationships. And I believe one of the things uh, that the networking industry does is it, is it heals old wounds because you get such incredible training about life, not about the product and not mm -hmm. about compensation, but how to be a better mom, how to be a better dad, how to be a better person. So to me, that is the most important thing is the right relationships moving forward. Exactly. I know, you know, with the Public Speakers Association, I have two rules. First rule, you have to be nice, no mean, grumpy, and negative yep. people. And the per second one is no perfect people, please. You know, we only <laughs> want imperfect people. It's like it's exhausting. You know, you're like, oh my gosh, you know, I want, it's about filtering out, I think, as much as it is about filtering in. You know, when you do meet the wrong person, you feel yourself slowing down, even though they may appear. And that's what I've met you know, Aspen and uh, Matthew, and I'm excited about meeting Elaine, is that kind of, I'm here to help. I'm here to expand on your life. Um, I like that kind of um, intake. How did you create Emrys? Uh, you know, did you have that kind of formula type uh, in mind of what kind of community you're wanting to build? I love that question because that's the first thing we had in mind. You know, we had all seen success. We knew what it looked like. We lived it, felt it, breathed it. And most importantly, we'd seen that for our teams. But we had also seen when, you know, people lose track, right? When, when, the, when the ship goes off track and it gets caught up in the storm and what that feels like. So before we even dug in, to the compensation plan, which was super fun. I'm a little bit of a nerd when it comes to math. <laughs> Before we even dug in to products and ingredients and formulations, which once again, we're all geeking out with our science, you know, science hats on. But before we even got there, we literally sat in a condo in Miami Beach with an easel and these big pieces of paper and big fat markers. Of course, I want to use one of every color. And we said, who are we? What does it look like to be a part of our company that we're developing? What would it look like if you were around us? What would you see? What would you hear? How do we sound? What would it feel like to be a part of this family and this community? Because a lot of people throw those words around. Oh, it's a family. And I get that. But I said, I don't want it to just be words here. I want it to be real. And so we really broke that down before we could even get to the rest. We knew that you got to build a house on a solid foundation. And so it was us digging in with each other and transparency was huge. When you were just talking about, you know, your friends know you anyway, et cetera, et cetera. That's how I was when I was building a business years ago. I was that mom that, yes, I want to show up on time to my events and treat it like a business and it's serious. But I was also that mom that might show up to do a presentation and realize I've got some spit up on my shoulder, right? It's like, well, take me as I am because perfect people aren't the ones that you're looking for. You're looking for that person that is authentic and genuine and can hustle their way to the top and that wants to grab everyone and take them with them. And if I've got a little baby spit up on here or if I've got you know a crayon popping out of the top of my purse, that's just what you're gonna get. And it was that authenticity that built relationships and built a business. And so Matthew and Eileen are the same way. I mean, if you've ever seen them on stage, it's incredible. Yes, they're fabulous speakers, but part of that is because they're authentic and open and share. And so as we met, we talked about what does it look like? Well, you know, people care about each other. We're locking arms. We're in this together. It's not this cutthroat thing. It's a place that you could feel at home. Even if you've been one of those people that's like, ooh, network marketing. Yeah, not my thing. This is going to be that place where you're going to say, you know what? Hmm, I might need to take a deeper look at this and see if maybe this is a fit. Or for someone who's been in the industry for a while like us, they're going to go, wow, this isn't what I've been seeing the last few years. This has got it right. And so transparency and integrity, because so many times, I don't know if you guys have ever felt this way there, you know, when a company has had ups and downs, what I had heard in the field as a network marketing coach was all we want to know is why. 
All we want to know is what's going on. If someone would just communicate and share. And so I said, let's just be transparent. Let's just be our authentic selves. Cause I don't really know how to be anything else. Like I've got five kids. And so, you know, I'm juggling all of those different roles very happily and very busily. I know that's not a word, but I do like to make up words on the spot. Sometimes just going to tell you that about me, but you know what? That's where it started before we could get to the other stuff. we got to get the people right. And we got to get that foundation right. So those were our earliest discussions. I know when JR and I were on a, a team that he was the CEO of a while back, one of the things that endeared me to him is we had a, a guy in the team that was bringing a lot of people to the table and he was making some money and making headway, but he was so negative and so, uh, and JR is like, bye, you got to leave. And I'm like, wow, you're going to pick you know, the value of the community over the value of money. And that was just like, remember that JR? No, but I mean all the time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh. I'm just kidding. No, no, the family, as, as it uh, has been talked about there, the family, and, and it truly is a family. If you're with a real company, right? The, the CEO like, like Aspen is, you know, it's our baby, right? So it's, it's something that's near and dear and you have to protect your family at all costs. And just because somebody can bring some value to the table, but then destroy more than they're bringing in value. You've got to weigh that out. And of course, you know, you just don't get rid of somebody because you don't like them. I mean, they have to actually step across the line and do something horrendous. But uh, to, 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 and I got to watch what I'm saying here because we're being recorded. So, you know, <laughs> when, it, when it comes to negative people, I, I accepted a long time ago when I was in the Marine Corps, when I was, you know, a teenager. I met a gentleman who was actually in combat, right? And had to actually kill people. I mean, hand to hand. I mean, it was something that was, uh, you know, not a good time, but he was a great mentor of mine, not in business, not in making money. And he gave me a word of advice that, that stuck with me ever from, from when I was just a young sergeant. And he said, it takes all kinds of people to make up the world. And as soon as you embrace it, that's the way the world works, the easier time you will have in the world. So I don't ever from that point try to change someone I constantly just sort through the people to find the people that we're looking for. And it's not that I'm trying to be dismissive to negative people or be dismissive to people that don't fit the bill. I just understand that's part of the landscape. And at the end of the day, it's only the yeses and the people that want to change. They want to change their life are the people that can to cohesively come together and do great things better than they can do on an individual basis. And that's the, the beauty of networking is the power of leverage, but it's the power of leverage with positive minded people who are trying to make the world a better place, including their own family. Is it, well, and there's so much freedom in that. I feel like that whole concept is so liberating, not feeling like I've got to change you or I've got to twist your arm, just knowing that it's okay. And as I hear you kind of talk about some of the people that, you know, your sphere of influence and the people you surround yourself with, I'm reminiscing as I'm sitting here going, there are times in my life where I didn't write somebody off and say, okay, you can no longer, you know, see me ever again. But it's like just knowing in this season or maybe the season they're in, that it's a better fit to not have them be like the top five people I'm spending the most time on the phone with or conversations or getting together. It doesn't mean that six months later, if they're in a better phase or if I'm in a different season, but it's just really not allowing other people to have that power over um, your mind and your mood. So much of just life in general, but especially in business is your mindset. And so just learning to, to guard that has been really important for me too. And, and Tanya, to expand upon that, you know, the, the cute story that you've heard me tell, and I won't tell the whole story, but, you know, sometimes it's just not the right time for someone. So you don't want to judge somebody just from a moment in time. And I remember I, I, yeah. I went, in the early 90s, I had got involved in a company and I tried to get a gentleman to sign up in the company. And he, he pretty much threw me out of his office with unkind words. But he, he signed up for the service, right? Because he was a friend and he did me that favor. And he gave me a referral even. Well, I took the referral. I saved a gentleman multiple five figures on the account. And he wanted to take my friend out to dinner. And, he call, and I called him up to say, the CEO wants to take you and the wife out for dinner because he has his tremendous savings. And he says, well, I, what do I get out of the deal? I said, you get dinner because you didn't want to belong to the company. And then he's like, well, you get back here and let's go do this thing. And within 90 days, that one individual was responsible for 5,000 referrals 
But if I were to be negative to that person because he was negative to me, none of that would happen. So sometimes that's a, that's a great lesson. So again, yeah. unless there's a behavioral pattern of cons consistent negativity where you have to dismiss and get rid of somebody, but sometimes people are just caught in the wrong moment in time. Circumstances happen beyond their control yeah. and we're all emotional creatures and we just have to understand that. And again, when you get into a company like the one that, that Aspen has created where the culture is, we're gonna let you be who you, you are. And we're gonna to go to take the best talent that you bring to the table and we're gonna go work with that. And we'll, we'll, we'll take the weaknesses and, and plug other people in. And so everybody can be who they are and everybody can be authentic, right? Transparency. That's the kind of programs that last long-term. Yeah. Yeah, and I think too, you know, looking at success and really what it takes, it's that decision-making moment of yourself, right? I remember in 2005, starting to go to business networking groups, and I was such an introvert. I think you were, you said you were too, Aspen, that, you know, speaking in front of a room, I was like shaking, sweating. I love showing people what I look like as an introvert, because this was me, ladies, and as in 2005, this was at a holiday gala. Yes, this is what I wore to a gala. So complete introvert. If I can get through, you know, all the shake shivers and I can't talk to people, anybody can get through it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Because <laughs> you, you went through that too, right, Aspen? Where you were like, I'm not a speaker. I'm not someone that should yes. be up front. Well, and I had spoken in small groups and as a former high school teacher, like, yeah, I was comfortable standing in front of a bunch of 15 year olds and teaching them how to count to 10 in Spanish, but you're telling me to stand in front of <laughs> grownups on stage. And so as I was getting ready to speak at my first, it was a conference, no less. The first time they were asking me to train and teach them front of people, I was the only speaker that didn't want to wear the microphone, you know, that kind of clips right here. I said, I can't do that. I need a handheld microphone because I'm hyperventilating so much. I'm going to get up there and everybody's going to hear me breathing like this crazy person, <laughs> the person who had, you know, coached me and said, you know, you need to get up here. Like you're the number one earner. You got to do this. This is part of it. They're like, don't worry, but stay on point. 30 minutes, you better kill it. And I'm like, no pressure. Stop <laughs> hyperventilating and get up there. And you know what though? What's so cool is once again, it goes back to this when you're authentic and you just know that being me and being real and driven is what got me here in the first place. Why would I get on stage and give any less than that? You know, people know I'll be the girl on stage laughing, making jokes randomly, but I'll also be the lady on stage that's going to sometimes cry because I'm moved to tears by how I feel about things. The honor of being a co-founder of this company. I can't help. I just did an event a week ago and looked out at the audience and I am humbled when I see that these people that have said yes, that know what we're doing here, that know what they have their hands on, that are so excited about the product, the business, the people the culture, the feel, the vision of where we're going, I can't help but be brought to tears when I look at them because there's so much gratitude. You know, I don't take it for granted for one second that this is a really, really big deal that we're doing that can help a lot of people. And so it moves me to emotion, but I'll tell you this, it started out pretty rocky with me going, are you sure? Can I just like smile and wave and hand you some, you know, some of my best tips and tools that we all know that's not the same, right? But I have found that staying inside of this bubble of what felt comfortable for me. And I got a lot of stories. We'll have to hop on here again. I'll tell them other stories about things that I've, awesome. I've been the crazy lady on the airplane, not enjoying the flight. Let's just say that I'll keep it. I'll keep it <laughs> calm right now. But when I stay here in my little cornfield in Nebraska with my kids around me, like there's no growth there. I'm not impacting, you know, yes, I'm impacting my kids, but I want to be that mom that shows them you can change the world. You can change the world if you care enough about people. And I'm not going to do that staying in this bubble of safety that just feels good. It's like, you know what? And you know how it is. I think, you know, relationships is, you know, exercising that muscle of caring about people. And for me, it was getting on stage. It's like, feel that fear then do it anyway and just kind of get through that. And so that first experience, it went fine. People, you know, <laughs> learned from it. I learned from it. I was like ready to be done but it changed everything for me because I didn't just stay in this bubble of safety. And I said, you know what, go after it. Let's just do it. So now I can wear 
a mic right here sometimes and I'm going to be okay. It doesn't mean I don't get some jitters, but you got to just laugh it off and take it one day at a time, right? Exactly. And I know, JR, you've gone through that transformation. I think we've all gone through that. Well, unfortunately, coming from a military background, I wasn't shy. I was actually too dominant where they made me during the break, go back uh, when the video was done, they, they had a clip of uh, the company video. I had to go back out and apologize <laughs> to the audience because I was just the opposite. So I, I had to learn uh, a whole different level of, of skill sets when it came to, to public speaking because, you know, obviously nobody from the audience hopefully wasn't going to shoot me. So I wasn't really nervous about the speaking part, but I had no clue on how to connect to people. And of course, that was uh, many decades ago. So now, uh, it, it, it's no, it's no big thing. I'm, I spend more time agonizing over, can I bring value to the people? Cause I respect their time. If they were to dress up and come to an event, I want to make sure that they walk out feeling they got more than their time, not their money, but their time was worth. Cause the time is the one thing that money can't buy. And we only get so much of it. And, and that's why I love this type of industry is you, cause you can compound the time frame, right? You can get more things done. You can get incredible things done if people unite and there's a, almost like a crusade. And that's the one thing I like about Immerse International is not only the transparency, not only having the right, right product at the right time, but just the whole mannerism and just the feeling you get, right? Like I remember when I saw one of the other co-founders, Mr. Harris, I knew instantly he was a good soul instantly he was a good soul because you know you can fool some of the people but if you know tanya like you and i we've seen i mean how many public speakers and you know the phonies right off the bat and this gen this gentleman was genuine you could tell he didn't stumble through his words it was coming from his heart not his head and those are the type of people and they're very rare those are the type of people i like to align myself with because i know that <clears throat> there's many more things i can learn even though it's been almost 30 it's actually been over 30 years Yes, I love it. And y'all probably were asking, what are the products for Amorous and why are, why would Tanya and JR and the fabulous Miss Aspen, you know, go into a business? What kind of things are they offering? And I've been blown away. It takes a lot to blow me away on product because you can imagine how many people come to me with, Tanya, try this, Tanya, try that. <laughs> and when I got into this and, and JR called me up, he goes, Hey, have you heard of CBD oil? I'm like, yeah, but I don't know anything about it. And so I did some research. They had a great video to watch and then I got the product. So this is the product. It's super easy to take. You just squirt it, you know, you just suck it up, squirt it on your mouth. And my husband and I are sleeping like a baby. We don't have, we're, all our achy stuff is gone. It is working. I am like blown away for myself and my husband, because you know who doesn't need a good night's sleep? Um, and it's easy. Uh, I just love that you found something that is easy to do and actually works. Absolutely. Well, and that was, you know, after we moved on from culture, community and all that, which you never really move on from, it's an underlying theme, but we had to keep planning product was huge. And so as people watch the video and some of the materials we have on our website, they can see that we've got supplements with and without, you know, CBD oil. Obviously that's the hot topic and where we're going to focus um, on the next few minutes. But we said we want to be a premium lifestyle product company, you know, premium meaning top quality and everything that we do and lifestyle because it's all about getting past that you know what, I've just accepted that I'm not going to sleep. I've just accepted that this is how I'm going to feel and saying, no, what? No way. That's just not going to work for us anymore. And that's not going to work for our customers and our brand ambassadors. Let's take our life up a notch with how we feel. CBD was a part of it. And I will tell you, we spent several months sampling different formulations from different companies because we really said, well, we got to know if we know we're doing premium for all these reasons. Well, what does it feel like and how is it when it's not premium? So of course, you know, like you've seen on our site and as you know, you know, we've organically grown our product. We use super critical CO2 extraction, really sciencey words that mean we're really careful with how we get that CBD out of there. You know, we leave in all the good stuff, the terpenes and cannabinoids, a bunch of words that most people don't know what they mean, but it just means we're leaving the whole plant together and we're just taking out the THC so that people don't have to stress about that 
part of it. You know, we're sourcing it. Like I said, it's organically grown because hemp pulls everything in from the soil. So there's a lot of things that we're doing. And in addition to that, we're third party testing it all. So it's like, you don't even have to believe me if you don't want to go to the site and look at all the testing that's done during the creation and uh, manufacturing process, but then look at the third party results too. And you can see that once again, it's transparency. It's like, get it all out there. Let you guys make that educated decision if we're a fit for you or not and go from there. But as we were trying it, it was really funny because I would try a bottle or a supplement or a gummy or something. And it would say 3000 milligrams of CBD. I'm like, Oh wow, this is going to be amazing. You know, I'm going to feel numb and you know, not experience. And I was like, okay, I don't necessarily feel anything. Sometimes I would, sometimes I wouldn't. So it was so educational for us to go, wow, the number only means so much. And without seeing the testing, you kind of don't really know what you're getting. So when we got to the space where we started working with the formulator of our Synergy product line that you showed one of our products in that Synergy by Emrys, I took it for the first time and I'll never forget this. I'll never forget this. I took it for the first time, woke up the next day, key, woke up the next day not an hour later, not two hours later. And I remember popping up out of bed, standing, and I'm facing my bathroom. And I remember standing there and stopping and going, what just happened? I slept all night. I'm not diagnosed with anything, but as a mom of five kids, my oldest is almost 18. I haven't slept through the night. Seriously, I'm not exaggerating since I was pregnant with him. And I thought, this is crazy. And I thought, this can't be this product. This is the biggest coincidence in the whole universe that this has. I'm like, and here, I, it's my company. You know? I'm, <laughs> I'm supposed to be like, woohoo. And I'm like, no, this is, this is not going to work. So I do it again the next night. And I will tell you this. It doesn't mean that I don't ever have a night where I wake up during the night. I mean, it's not anesthesia, right, you guys? Like every once in a while, I'll still, my eyes will pop open at 3 a.m. Why? Because I want to be a world changer. And I got a lot of things I'm thinking about but I'm getting back to sleep, you know? So yeah. when I look at the a whole 30 days, I'm like, wow, this has changed everything. It hasn't cured me of everything that's ever existed in my life, but I'm feeling so much less stress. You know, people are like, how do you do it? You got all these kids and stuff. I'm like, yeah, it's busy, but it's amazing. And I'm feeling good. And it's taking the edge off of that stress. It's helping me fall asleep quicker and stay asleep longer. That's all I wanted out of it. It's just to feel a little better, you know, and I'm in my early forties and I've got some reasons that I'm aching and just to feel like, okay, ugh, took the edge off, you know, and more has been powerful for me. So it's funny. I share that because I want you to know, even I was like, no way <laughs> I knew this was good. And I knew how we were formulating it and manufacturing it. I knew it was great, but like, seriously, like, no. So I always tell people, you know what? Yes, you're going to see CBD out there. It's at the gas station. It's at this, it's at that. I don't know where it all is. It's everywhere. That doesn't mean anything other than people are really excited because they've heard what it can do, but why not look for one that's top tier, top of the line? You know, why not for a couple bucks a day, if you, to me, this is worth it. I'd, I'd pay triple for it if I could feel this good. It's like, why not try it and just see if it works for you? You know, we're not making medical claims and cure claims or anything like that. We don't need to try the product and see if you're blown away, like our customers are like, that's where I was at with it. So we knew, and we're going to keep expanding that line. I can't give away any secrets. Um, even though I trust your viewers, of course, I know they're amazing. Um, they're following you. One of the best leaders I've ever seen in several different spaces and business and life. Someone, someone's so authentic, but we're developing, we've got some skincare lines coming out. We've got some weight management lines coming out, some with CBD, some without. So this is a, a, a company that's shaking up the industry, that's shaking up health and wellness, that's shaking up families in a really good way and just making waves. And I'm all about it. You know, I'm all about just making waves and finding those people. I'm a firm believer in what I'm looking for is looking for me and what we're putting out. I know there are people that are looking for exactly what we have when it comes to product and exactly what we have when it comes to business. We're just waiting for those right people to find us, you know, and to say yes to the product, yes to the business, yes to both. Yes. Oh, 
Oh, we just lost the fabulous Miss Aspen. She just dropped. <laughs> so make sure everyone go, because I have tried other CBD oils. They did not um, even affect me at all. And so I was kind of skeptical. But when I started taking Synergy, it really did work. And I was like, wow, this is something I can back. So JR and I jumped in. So go to the link um, in the, you know, little description here. It's at... Um, Emrys, E M R I S, international.com forward slash Fort Knox, F, capital F T K N O X. And so I, it's right there in the fun little description. So that way you just click on it. But thank you, JR, for being on today. I appreciate it. My pleasure. <clears throat> and if I could expand upon a little uh, in a different light than what um, yeah. Aspen was talking about, because I'm, I'm, I'm part of that geek geek team with the numbers, right? So when you look at the sales last year of that industry, right, which has only been around since uh, 18, since our current president passed a law to let him back into the marketplace, it's grown 700 million, which is a pretty impressive number in such a short period of time. But by 2022, right, which is just a handful of years ahead of us, you're looking at 21 billion more in sales. And so I like to be involved in the beginning of a massive movement, right, a massive trend. And then if the product is going to inspire a lot of personal testimonies and referrals, that's the place where you want to be. <clears throat> that's the place, excuse me, where you want to be, not where you have to like convince somebody of something that the product is going to sell itself after the fact. Those are the type of opportunities that are fun, simple, and explosive. And so that's one of the things I like. And then, of course, as we've heard from the wonderful CEO of this company, pretty much a visionary, uh, likable person and obviously very authentic. So Tanya, again, thanks for having me on uh, your show here today. It's always a pleasure. Yay. All right, everyone. We will see you next time. Make sure you go try it, check it out and contact us. If you have any questions, you know, we're always here to support you um, and always go out and have fun and, and make a difference in this world. So thanks, Jared. Thanks everybody.